the Nadelian catastrophe, known in Russia as the catastrophe at Baikonur Cosmodrome, was a launch pad accident that occurred on the 24th of October 1960 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Soviet Kazakhstan. As a prototype of the R-16 intercontinental ballistic missile was being prepared for a test flight, an explosion occurred when the second stage engine ignited accidentally, killing an unknown number of military and technical personnel working on the preparations. Despite the magnitude of the disaster, information was suppressed for many years and the Soviet government did not acknowledge the event until 1989. With more than 54 casualties, it is the deadliest disaster in space exploration history. The catastrophe is named for the Chief Marshal of Artillery, Mitrofan Ivanovich Nedelin, who was the head of the R-16 development program and perished in the explosion. Launch Preparations Due to the secrecy surrounding events, little information is known about the event. However, certain facts can be confirmed from information and data released. On the 23rd of October 1960, the prototype R-16 intercontinental ballistic missile had been installed on Launching Pad 41, awaiting final tests before launch. The missile was over 30 metres long, 3 metres in diameter and had a launch weight of 141 tonnes. The rocket was fueled with a hypergolic pair of UDMH as fuel and a saturated solution of Ventu 4 in nitric acid as the oxidizer, nicknamed Devil's Venom, which was used because of the high boiling temperatures and hence storability of the fuel and oxidizer, despite being extremely corrosive and toxic. These risks were accounted for in the safety requirements of the launch procedures, but Nedlin's insistence on achieving a test launch ahead of the 7th of November 1960, anniversary of the Bolshevik Revolution, resulted in extreme schedule pressure in a context of substantial emerging engineering difficulties. Ultimately, pre-launch tests began to overlap with launch preparations. On the 21st of October, the R-16 rocket was transported from the assembly and testing facility to the launch site. The final assembly started, and by the 22nd of October, the rocket was already situated on the launch pad. On the 23rd, the rocket was fueled with plans to launch the same day. However, an hour before the scheduled launch, an unexpected explosion of the squibs occurred between the engines and the propellant, resulting in melted wiring. Investigations began to ascertain the cause and rectify the issues. On the morning of the 24th of October, all identified defects had been rectified, although some discovered issues necessitated significant times for repairs. The Commission considered specialist reports, but ultimately opted for a manual launch, which the launch mechanism was designed to accommodate. Despite objections from some designers and engineers against making adjustments to a fueled rocket, Marshal Nedlin was insistent on proceeding with the work to ensure a same-day launch. Accident As work continued towards the same-day launch, workers commenced setting a specialised software current distributor to the zero position. At this precise moment, a short circuit in the replaced main sequencer caused the second stage engine to fire while being tested before launch. This detonated the first stage fuel tanks directly below, causing an explosion which destroyed the missile. Before seeking refuge, the camera operator remotely activated automatic cameras set around the launching pad that filmed the explosion in detail. People near the rocket were instantly incinerated. Those farther away were burned to death or poisoned by the toxic fuel component vapors, with the fire raging on for two hours. Andrei Sakharov described many details. As soon as the engine fired, most of the personnel there ran to the perimeter, but were trapped inside the security fence and then engulfed in the fireball of burning fuel. The explosion incinerated or asphyxiated Nedlin, a top aide, the USSR's top missile guidance designer, and over 70 other officers and engineers. Still others died later of burns or poisoning. Missile designer Mikhail Yangel survived only because he had left to smoke a cigarette behind a bunker a few hundred metres away, but nonetheless suffered burn injuries. The exact death toll of the explosion is not known. The first Western reporting on the accident via the Italian Continentale News Agency in December 1960 said that 100 people were killed, while The Guardian reported in 1965 
citing information from spy Oleg Penkovsky, who had passed the information to the West, that as many as 300 had died. The Soviet Union said only a significant number had died when it first acknowledged the incident in a 1989 Ogniok article. But later in the year, the government put the number of dead at 54. The most recent estimated death toll released by Roscosmos on the 50th anniversary of the accident and originating with agency engineer Boris Chertok was that 126 people had died, but the agency qualified the number by saying that the actual number could be anywhere from 60 to 150 dead. Aftermath Complete secrecy was immediately imposed on the events of the 24th of October 1960 by Nikita Khrushchev. A news release stated that Nadalin had died in a plane crash and the families of the other engineers were advised to say their loved ones had died of the same cause. Khrushchev also ordered Lindy Brezhnev to head an investigation commission and go to the site. Among other things, the commission found that many more people were present on the launch pad than should have been. Most were supposed to be safely off-site in bunkers. When Brezhnev arrived at the firing range on the 25th of October 1960, he said, Comrades, we do not intend to put anyone on trial. We are going to investigate the causes and take actions to recover from the disaster and continue operations. Despite this, I.A. Doroshenko was held accountable for the event. Afterwards, when Nikita Khrushchev asked Yangel, But why have you remained alive? Yangel answered in a trembling voice, I walked away for a smoke. It's all my fault. Yangel later suffered a heart attack and was off work for months. After the committee presented its report, the R-16 program resumed in January 1961, with the first successful flight on the 2nd of February 1961. The delay to the R-16 spurred the USSR towards development of more effective ICBMs and sparked Khrushchev's decision to install intermediate range ballistic missiles in Cuba. Before the disaster, Yangel had ambitions to challenge Sergei Korolev as leader of the manned space program, but he was directed to focus on the R-16. A memorial to the victims of the test was erected in the first half of the 1960s in the park of Baikonur and is still visited by RKA officials before any manned launch. Another fatal accident with the R-9 missile occurred at Baikonur exactly three years after the Nedlin catastrophe, causing the 24th of October to be referred to as Baikonur's Black Day. No launches have been attempted on that date at Baikonur ever since. After the event, official acknowledgement was not given, with a news release stating that Nedelin had died in a plane crash while on an undisclosed mission. The Italian news agency Continentale first reported on the 8th of December 1960 from undisclosed sources that Marshal Nedelin and a hundred people had been killed in a rocket explosion. The Guardian reported on the 16th of October 1965 that captured spy Oleg Penkovsky had confirmed details of the missile incident, and exiled scientist and Soviet dissident Soles Medvedev provided further details in 1976 in the British weekly magazine New Scientist. However, it was not until the 16th of April 1989 that the Soviet Union acknowledged the events, with a report appearing in the weekly news magazine Ogonyok. Today, the memorial in the city of Baikonur along with launch pad number 41 at the Cosmodrome, which has been left unrestored, stand as solemn reminders of these tragic events and the inherent dangers of rocket science. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then please give it a like. And for more amazing tales and thrilling stories, don't forget to subscribe to Uncovered Secrets. Also, hit the bell icon to stay notified for every release.